Hello, hello, we are back yet again with another edition of the Fool in Question, the Sewer Rat. I don't think that's a question. He is a, that doesn't come into question. He is a sewer rat. He's a rodent. An ass wipe, excuse my language. Anyway, and I'm pretty sure all of you agree. But anyway, in this particular part of the trial, Dow is apparently ousted from the main courtroom he is in the auxiliary courtroom as a result of uh his conduct of challenging the judge on rulings one of the things that i never or i couldn't understand was the fact that daryl would always challenge the judge on a ruling and then try to get her reconsideration of the ruling as if that was going to happen it wasn't going to change what he had to say had no bearing it didn't move the needle in terms of the judge changing her mind um, to rule in his favor. Um, it A lot of that even happened on the uh, the things that Daryl Brooks was alleging that were speculative. Judge Doro is not going to rule and deny the state on speculation. It doesn't work like that in the courtroom. So let's dive in and I will make my remarks intermittently as i always do here we go we'll talk about whether any of the instructions that are in here um need to be modified in any way taken out edited etc beauty right you're unmuted now but as long as but you have to not interrupt uh, you can't you can't i'm not trying to interrupt but how can you deny me the chance to put on an adequate defense by saying nothing that you told me to do can be presented into evidence so you 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 filed them. You filed everything that I gave to you. You right. filed. Mr. Brooks, I'm and going to mute yeah. you because this is not relevant at this time. It is. He, he's raised tone of voice. He's very animated. He threw the jury instructions on the floor. Um, I love. By the way, I love how she's getting all of that on the record because <laughs> it's like there. He's being double screwed, and and the more he yells, the more he throws things on the floor. The more he throws a temper tantrum. That is in the favor of the state. It's being recorded. It's on the record. It's going to be reviewed by the Court of Appeals. This is this is this is wonderful. Keep going, Daryl. Keep going. I understand you're <laughs> upset, sir. I understand you believe I'm violating your right to present a defense. I've made my rulings. I determine you forfeited your right to testify, which includes the right to present evidence as you would have testified. I closed your, and I, I closed off your ability to call any other witnesses by finding that you forfeited your right to do so based upon your conduct. I understand you're frustrated. I understand you believe that uh, I'm not without authority to do that. I made specific factual findings. I've referenced the law and you being upset with the decision is not going to change my mind. He's also- Exactly, did you hear what she said? It's not going to change her mind. So why did he keep impugning her as if it was going to change her mind? I don't understand that part. He just exacerbated it. And that's why he's in that auxiliary courtroom. It's all forfeiture. He's upset because she closed off his ability to call witnesses. Well, why did she do that? For every action, there's a reaction. Well, what was Mr. Brooks's action? His actions was his conduct. So how you going to get upset and you the one that, that screwed up? It was by your own conduct. How you going to get mad at her? I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand... Um, how Brooks's brain like interprets the way it does. Like, how does he think like that? He's he's just dumb, stupid. And then if he gets caught, it's somebody else's fault. Same way in the in the interrogation room, all he did was downplay Erica the entire time, and he's the one that ran her over. Well, he didn't downplay Eric. He tried to downplay what he did. And try to make it 
seemed like it was somebody else's fault. I don't understand it. I, I just taking the headphones off. It's his choice right now whether he participates in this jury instruction conference. Um, it is his choice. But if he is going to spout off about things that I've already determined, I will continue to exercise the mute function on the audio equipment. And this is why I think that he was a narcissist because she has authority to make rulings. Dow Brooks felt as if she doesn't. She was without authority to do so. That's why he was challenging her. And again, I don't know why he continued to do that, given that it wasn't going to change her mind. When she makes a ruling, that is, well, actually, it's interlocutory because finality is if, if there's an appeal. And I don't believe there is. There's too much evidence to the contrary. It's too much. I don't think there's an appeal. But anyway, he was a narcissist. He thought he had authority over women. And guess what? He did have authority over women until he met Judge Duro. See, that was foreign to him. He's not accustomed to a woman instructing him or having jurisdiction over him, power, authority, etc. He's not used to that. So this was almost like a recalibration. He had to recalibrate like, wait a minute, how is this judge? You know, how can she do that? She can't do this. He forgot that she was a judge. That she had the inherent authority to tell him otherwise, whether he liked it or not. Keep going. I'll unmute him again, but it, but you are advised, sir, you need to be proper. You need to not interrupt and you need to stay on task. He's not going to do that. And when she unmutes him, unfortunately, you are unmuting him at your own risk. Which is we're discussing jury instructions, not other evidence, not subject matter jurisdiction, not your belief that I told you to file things a certain way. We are now discussing jury instructions. So once again, I'll unmute him to see if he can follow these simple rules. You need to tell me why I can't present evidence. See, now you notice, you notice now he's going back. He's deflecting. She's already ruled on that. We are at a different phase and he keeps going back after a ruling was already made. So she really needs to mute him again. How can you deny me the fact Shut how up. can you deny me my right to present Shut evidence? Shut your mouth! All right, I, I will mute you him once you. again Thank you. because he wants to continue. And again, I understand he's upset. I understand that. He has himself to blame. It was his conduct as a result of that ruling. Um, but he has himself to blame I know that's for right. his conduct this morning and the rulings that I've made. All right, so let's go through these jury instructions. Uh, first of all, Look at y'all see him sit there. <laughs> he don't like that. He don't he can he don't want no he can't he can't stand for a woman to tell him and to mute him. Basically basically that mute button, you know, is a nice way of saying shut the hell up. Basically is is that's what that means. Shut the hell up. How dare a woman tell him that? See, that's what he's thinking. Oh, he doesn't like this. He's not used to this kind of, this kind of carrying on. I know that's right. Um, has the state received a copy of the draft? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Brooks, do you acknowledge receipt? I believe you did by acknowledging it previously, but do you acknowledge receipt of the draft of the final jury instructions? Now, let's see if he can stay on task or if he's going to deflect back to a ruling that was already made. We're past that. We're in a different phase. We're in the jury instructions now. That's where we are. Let's see if he can stay on task. I don't acknowledge nothing, and I don't and I don't acknowledge anything now. I have not received anything. I would ask the bailiff to I pick up the see. documents from the floor and put them in front of him. And wait, I'm not. I don't. I'm not presenting it to nothing. I don't give my consent to. You can't deny me the right to put on the defense. How can you tell me? When I, I just say it I'm gonna once again. Thank you, thank you, because now he's gone back once again to a ruling that was already made. 
It's not going to work, Brooks. Why do you keep deflecting back to that? We are at a different phase. This is a, co a colloquy outside of the presence of the jurors to go over that, the dynamics as it relates to the jury instructions. But you want to deflect. And that's why he's being muted once again. Once again. Because again, I understand he's upset. If the bailiff could confirm, well, he put him on top, he put him on the floor. That's his right. They're not in front of him, but it's by his own conduct that he's done that. He can throw him on the floor, you know, as, as long as there's record that he did receive them. So whatever he does with them, that's solely on him. The record should reflect Mr. Brooks is muted because he wants to continue to debate with this court about my prior rulings regarding his uh, forfeiture by conduct of his right to present further evidence on his behalf. Notice she said her prior ruling. So that means we're past that. But he keeps going back as if that's going to change her mind. It's not. <laughs> I would like a reconsideration of your ruling. What the hell? I mean, what is he smoke? What is he on? <laughs> oh, this is crazy. I know one of the things I probably need to look at, I'm not sure if Madam Clerk did this or not, would be the language from the amendment from the amended information. Oh, look at him. Doesn't he look pissed off? Oh, he's pissed. <laughs> you know why he's pissed? Because it's not going his direction. It's not swaying his way. Well, guess what? Okay. He was no help for it. Not. Do you think he was he was a help in front of those jurors in light in light of them swaying his direction? Hell no. He never even gave them a reason to. I don't think the jurors liked him from the start. And, and if the jurors don't like you, child, you in trouble. And he did not give them a reason to like him. Acting a fool in front of them, the judge had to keep uh, 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 excusing them because of his conduct invariably throughout the entirety of the trial. Brooks did not give the jury a reason I don't believe he gives anybody a reason to like him. Child, I can't stand him. And I know y'all don't either. I know that's right. On count uh, 70, 70. Look at it. He's pissed. Uh oh, he's got his little boxes. He's going to try to hide behind those boxes. <laughs> um, 76 the 76 count uh, it says near frame park so it is in there but looks that was like just one question I had looks like he's about to build a little fort there <laughs> um, so state have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions I'm just going through each one I'm on page 50 of 107 Everything's looking great so far, though. Okay. I, fair enough. There's 107 pages. I certainly can give the parties some time to continue to read through them. Oh, he's hiding behind those little boxes. He's hiding behind the boxes. So as they are going over the instructions regarding the jury instructions, she, she wants to include Mr. Brooks, but he keeps going back to prior rulings. We are at a different phase of the trial. That's why he's muted. He feels like he's, you know, they're making decisions without him. She's trying to include him, but it's not fruitful to keep going backwards when we are at a different phase of the trial. Because that would be considered delay. That's a delay tactic. We're past that. 
Mr. Brooks is requesting to go back to his cell at this point. I'm going to deny that request. He can remain in the other courtroom. Why does he want to go back to his cell? He feels like he's not being included in this. Again, she's trying to include him, but he's not staying on task. That's the problem. See, and I like this. He's not getting what he wants. He wants to go back to his cell. Guess what? You're not going. And this is a woman that has authority over him telling him what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. I know that's right. And look, it, it appears that he's making some gestures behind the box. I don't know why the judge didn't uh, have the bailiffs remove the boxes right away. It did take some time. And, this, and it was actually a suggestion by the state. Because they said, Your Honor, would it be, would it just be easier if, they, if the bailiffs can move the boxes? <laughs> this should have been done right away. Now, what is he gesturing? What is he doing? Oh, y'all can y'all hear him yelling? Now he's got to be extremely loud, given that he's muted. I know he's muted, but I can certainly hear him from this side. <laughs> Me too. He appears to be yelling <laughs> at the top of his lungs. I hear I can't him. can't decipher what he's yelling. He's got to be super loud if he's muted. <laughs> oh, man, what a trial this was. Judge Duro says she has been on the bench for 11 years. And this trial is something that she's never encountered before. Never. What what a tribunal this was. What a caricature. It was, I mean, Daryl Brooks made it a spectacle. What is he pointing? Is he yelling at the, the bailers? Oh, no. Now, what is he doing with the papers? Is he accept, does he, he, he doesn't accept value in return? <laughs> or he accept value in return? That value of these documents he's probably I'll advise could. Mr. Brooks without a specific waiver of his right he's to be back. present even if it's from the remote courtroom he's going to remain in that courtroom you know by the way um even when he was um now this was obviously after this because during the sentencing when he was ousted uh from the uh, main courtroom uh he wanted to come back but he needed a written waiver but the wording on it was, I don't intend to interrupt. That is not answering the question. That is vague. That is not definitive at all. And she would not allow him back because the, the language of that wasn't definitive enough. It wasn't answering the question. I don't intend. That's like saying, I don't, I can't guarantee it. That's not definitive. <laughs> and that would require him to have a colloquy with me. Conversation. He's still going back and forth. Wait a minute. He's, it looks like he's he's yelling. I wonder what he's what is he saying. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I said earlier that Daryl Brooks made this a spectacle. I wonder if this was done intentionally because he knew he wasn't going to win. Because he did say in a part of this trial where he said, I'm finna lose anyway, so what does it matter? And so I'm wondering, is that why he was carrying on like this? I mean, this was absolutely gratuitous. It was uncalled for. But I think it was done by intent. No different than what he did at that Walkershaw parade was done by intent. That is my assessment. That's what I believe. He knew exactly what he was doing. And he knows what he's doing even in this trial. Because he came there with the intent to disrupt. To cause chaos. To make it a spectacle. To be the opposition. 
to be adversarial. And so they are reviewing. Now there's a lot of pages. I think it was a hundred and uh, some pages according to those jury instructions. So this is gonna be a while. But the fool in question has built a fort. Again, I don't know why the state took too long to inform the judge for him to move Mr. those Brooks, boxes. Mr. Brooks, I know you are still muted by me, but I know the audio is working, but I would ask you to specifically advise if there are any specific jury instructions that you are asking be read to the jury. Let's see if he can stay on task. Let's see, <laughs> you're at your old risk. <laughs> when you unmute Mr. Brooks. <laughs> Uh-oh, is he unmuted? Are we going to get a response? What is he doing with those the materials? Oh no. Oh, I thought she was going to unmute him. What is he? I wonder what he's saying back there. And none of this was to benefit him. That's the other thing. <laughs> like, did he want, I mean, did he want to screw his own self? Sometimes I think maybe he wanted to screw his own self. I mean, by process of elimination, because everything he did, did not work. I told y'all in a previous video, Mr. Brooks was like a cheap watch in this trial because he was stopped every second. <laughs> all right he here are we're getting a bird's eye view of the attorneys uh conferring with one another now we're looking at the fool in question those boxes need to be removed we need to see this fool in question he's unquestionably mr brooks if you have specific instructions a fool or categories of instructions that you believe this court should consider. I need you to write them down on a piece of paper. If you don't have, I believe I see a writing utensil. I'm not sure if I see a pad of paper. We'll make sure you have that. But given your current demeanor, um, which is still seems quite animated. Well, that explains why she didn't mute him early. I mean, she, she didn't unmute him earlier to get the response. <coughs> Because he was already yelling. That was his demeanor. But I don't think that he's going to conform to writing anything down. Because number one, he doesn't like the fact that he's in that auxiliary courtroom. He doesn't like the fact that he's muted. And so now he has to write it down. I don't think he's going to conform to that. But let's see. In a loud raised voice, I'd ask that you write it down. I don't think he's going to do that. He needs to move those boxes. Yeah, can you imagine if she unmuted him right now? He would be loud as hell. Because li listen to his demeanor. He's going off. And I don't know what for. Wow. It's like, I don't understand how you commit this horrible crime, but yet it's, it's, it's everybody else's fault other than me. <laughs> I'm the victim. Like, I, I don't understand that. That is true narcissistic behavior. Can't, will not take the blame. And he's the cause of this. He did this. He is the sole reason. His actions. What he calls. Put him in jail. Put him in this spot. So that's on him. As Judge Doro said. Mr. Brooks has his self to blame. By his conduct. And his conduct in that parade warranted, 
where we are in the trial. And as the attorneys are carefully going through this, listen, I'm going to leave it at this. And I want you guys to comment. Give me your thoughts on this. The fool in question. What's the state doing on its review? Okay. If you can listen closely, you can actually hear him yelling. And by the way, he's muted. Sounds like a dichotomy, right? <laughs> it's muted, but you can still hear it. <laughs> That's how loud he is. Let me fast forward to see if we can get a response because this is the part of the trial where he was asked to move the boxes. So let's see. There we go. You have any requests for jury instructions? Or in your review, you think anything needs to be changed, deleted, <coughs> added, etc.? I know I'd ask that it be put in writing, but I'll also give you this opportunity to verbally advise the court. At your own risk. You're doing it at your own risk, just Duro. <laughs> and make your requests. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? I would note he put two boxes right in front of move him. Seated, so I can't presently see his face. Well, I move him. His jacket is off, so I can see the outline of his arms. And I can see the jacket. I like that. The outline or the silhouette of his arms. Ah, go ahead. On the back of his <laughs> chair. Um, he is unmuted. I've confirmed previously regarding the audio working and I will basically Judge Doro's just telling on him. <laughs> Everything he does, she's telling on him. <laughs> but he's not making it any better by being uh adversarial. Come on. Just ask him a second time, sir. Do you have any <laughs> requests as it relates to the draft? packet of jury instructions whether that be any additions corrections edits or deletions let's see if let's see if we get an answer he's not response writer, would it be possible for the bailiffs to just move the boxes off the table so yes we i think see? that's fair i'm going to advise the bailiff to remove the box so i can see but my question is why did the state have to tell the judge to do that she's in control of the courtroom not the state why didn't she just do it I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Mr. Brooks. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing behind there. I don't know either. I don't know why you didn't tell him earlier to remove those boxes. He has quieted down. He hasn't. I haven't heard him in a while. We need to see you. Can That's you why. the second one because it can interfere with the microphone as well. And the third. And the third. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now we Mr. can. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you for a third time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? <clears throat> any requests for instructions that aren't included that you believe should be included? Any edits or deletions from the packet that has been provided to you? Now we can see. Because I couldn't see you, sir. Oh, what? Um, I've asked you twice now, and I'll ask you a third time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Any additions, deletions, edits, or otherwise? Hey, man, you, you don't got to talk to me like that. Talk to you like what? She just asked you a question. Requests? First of all, to the, of all related what? to the jury instructions, sir. And yeah, yeah, I got, I got requests. It ain't like they're gonna be honored though, because as it relates to the jury instructions, <laughs> sir, what are you? I heard what the hell you said, man. Oh, that, that oh, that's nasty. That is nasty for him to respond to her in a very vulgar way like that. That was the epitome of vulgarity. Mr. Brooks is the epitome of. I hate to say this. I'm y'all know I'm a Christian. Let me let me be quiet on that. Yeah, I, I, I'll reserve that tongue. <laughs> <laughs>
but no mr mr brooks is the epitome of evil um and i'm glad that this has come to an end and and unfortunately it doesn't really bring finality to those that lost loved ones as a result of his actions but it um definitely represents a bittersweet situation sometimes things can be bitter sweet it could be sweet but there could be a little bitter in it and i think it's a hybrid of both of those instruments anyway listen please like share and subscribe if you haven't thank you for listening